Can I hand you over to a good friend of ours, one lassie from Edinburgh right here? She's going to sing a Scottish song written by uh, a man called Matt McGinn from Glasgow, who, uh, who would never remain it either. He died about 40 years ago, though we remember him well. Um, this, this song is a, a lullaby, a man's lullaby, so Janet Weatherston from Edinburgh is going to give the song. It's the most unlikely thing anybody would ever ask you to sing a lullaby. <laughs> 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 I'm not exactly sort of It won't cost a lot of dough, 
It's called the Erigna Show. There's a place where any youth can trace old Ireland's mining story. Underground where can be found the smell of guts and glory. Sound enhanced where miners chance to rig nest broad brooding canyons. Sweat and toil below the soil with brown rats for companions. Come down to Warigna, have yourself a blast. Come down to Warigna and celebrate the past. You'll see Irish mining through a miner's eyes. Only 15 euro and a booking fee applies. <laughs> Trace the tracks where miners backs once bent as props were creaking. Days of grind where men can't find good work while roofs were leaking. You'll hear noise of men and boys who once were cold faced fighters. Have a snack, enjoy the crack, but please don't light your lighters. Please procure a tour brochure and turn the glossy pages. It will show scenes from below of mining through the ages. Stories there of deep despair that soon will have you crying. Trousers that would freeze BGs with little chance of drying. Come down to Arigna and have yourself a blast. Come down to Arigna and celebrate the past. You'll see Irish mining through a miner's eyes. Only 15 euro and a booking free fee applied. Oh, I think it's cheaper than that, but 10 doesn't scan very well. <laughs> Christmas time will come down. Christmas time come down the mine. But don't forget our motto. Have a jar, but we will bar those blotto in the grotto. Come now to our Christmas show. Has Santa River dancing? Karaoke, hokey pokey, Rudolph daily prancing. Come down to Rigna and have yourself a blast. Come down to Rigna and celebrate the past. You'll see Irish mining through a miner's eyes. Only 15 euro and a fucking fair place. <laughs> Not many people know that uh, Paddy Dagnan actually worked in the mine. I, I didn't know it. He was mostly known as being a musician and a great flute player. But I found out very, he stayed over in my house one night and I had to kick my son out of the bed and then Paddy in his bed. And the next morning, there must have been a ton of uh, coal dust in the bed. <laughs> so that was how I found out that Paddy actually worked in the mine. But he was a, a character and uh, he, he um, sort of literally existed out of his music. He, he um, uh, was probably the first professional musician around here because he literally spent his day going from here into Drumshambo on the truck and then he'd stay in Drumshambo for his lunch maybe and come back out again here and then go back in again, in and out the whole time into Drumshambo and out again. But uh, way back in the 1950s, there's a flower shop if you're going through Drumshambo on the right hand side. Uh, uh, it's got a French name, I can't just think what it is now. But uh, that used to be, huh? La Belle Fleur, very good. But your French is great. Yeah. <laughs> but um, before that, there was a, 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 a Doherty's Hall was there at the back, and there was a pub called Doherty's Pub, and it was owned by, a, I think his name was Pat Doherty, and he was a return, what we know, you know as a returned yank. And he used to uh, rule the place with an iron fist, and he'd always stand at the door almost like his own bouncer in a big white suit and a, and a big cowboy hat, white cowboy hat. And uh, he was known as the jerk, uh, mainly because he called everybody else a jerk. So he became known as the jerk. And one of his clientele was Packy Dagnan. And this would be back in the 50s when it really it was, it wasn't cool to be into traditional music at the time. And Packy would get in and uh, he wouldn't be, maybe he'd have a pint and the next thing he'd have the flute out and before long um, we'd be people gathering around him and asking him for this tune and that tune and the other tune. Before um, Packy with a five or six pints lined up on the on Thing. And this is this is how he sort of existed, you know. And he would get food and all, and all, all there in the, in, in the pub. But um, Pat saw a flaw in this. He said he wasn't, you know, he wasn't making any money out of this guy from it. So, so he, this particular day, he turned to Dagen and he said, "Hey there, Dagen." He said, "Get out of here with that goddamn three-piece wallet of yours and don't come back." <laughs> I thought it was a great idea for a song, so I wrote this little song way back. I've got 
30 or 40 years ago now. But Happy was one of the first people I met. Anyway, it goes like this. Why wouldn't I direct it all night and day? And tomorrow we'll do the same again. It would cause me no great pain. And me down me three piece while I play to your drum a lot in time. They have three why wouldn't I give me what the reason why? I played for them in Dublin town, in old Packet Street, so gay. They can fill a pint of porter dead as they drive your bite in the train. Sure, I played the mouse in that public house and the books so of more and more. And women that met to the hear it again, they would stand to their knees in the snow. If for you, why wouldn't I directly all night and day? And tomorrow do the same again, it would cause me no great pain. And me down, me three piece, while I pay to drum a lot in time. They for you, why? And the other day I played with them in the county of Westmead. I landed in Kilbeg in town where my friends invited me. In Edward's town in Mullingar, I stopped to take a pee. I landed in the place of green and met the company. They free you, why wouldn't I enter and play all night and day? And tomorrow do the same again, it would cause me no no get pain. And me down me three piece while I played at your drum a lot in time. Let me why wouldn't I give me what the reason why? But Packy uh, was always anybody remember Packy at all, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was always impeccably dressed, always had a, a lovely suit on, a shirt and tie, and a fair eyed sweater underneath the suit to keep him out the cold. <laughs> But he always, anybody remember, he used to always wear a, a coltis medal, a gold coltis medal in his left lapel. And I, I don't know what he actually got it for, but uh, he always wore it anyhow. But I happened to be over in Drums now one day, and there was a, a flute player over there called the Butcher McLaughlin. Remember him? He used to have sessions on a Monday night. And here was the Butcher McLaughlin with a, a medal in his lapel. I met Cap Packy a few days later, and I said, Do you know the Butcher McLaughlin has a medal just like yours? This is Packy Bob. <laughs> <laughs> but he was a character and we loved him dearly and, uh, and many of the night I avoided him. You know, he'd be standing on the street and you'd know you'd have to bring him up to go or other. You'd never get him. You'd never be allowed to talk to him again, you know. But uh, he had sort of a healthy disrespect for people. I remember Mick Woods, another flute player, and sadly he's still in hospital over in Pat's in Carrick now. But when Woods, when Woods came back from England, it was like God had appeared, because Mick Woods worked in the Kevin Woods show band way back in the 40s and 50s, and he was a, a sort of a musical idol for everybody. And when he came home in the summertime, there'd be cues outside Paddy Max and Brooke Chambo just to hear him play. A great sax player and a great flute player. But when he came back to stay, the, the local community decided to welcome him back by buying him a brand new flute, which cost at the time about £2,000. It was a Bruce de Bay flute. You know what that is? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, I'll tell you what Packy thought about it. I, I sort of said to Packy one day, I met him, I said, did you get a go on them, on Mick's new flute? I did. I said, what do you think? He says, you get more music out of a bicycle phone. <laughs> <laughs>
swallow Better to drop my lung in time That way you probably wouldn't like your name What the fees of wine Where the tourists tread Now 
Who wrote this song some time back without any knowledge of the area? I believe I'm just the one or two things, which is fine by me and fine by it. That's what it's all about. Um, we were talking about Pat Doherty there. Uh, Pat ran the Mayflower, or the Doherty's Hall, in competition with the Mayflower for a short time. And one night, uh, one Sunday night, uh, and three or four came in and were sitting along the wall and they were looking around and they were wondering that there was uh, no one coming in. So after a while they ventured to ask Pat uh, and they went over and they said to him, is this the Mayflower? And he said, by Jesus, no, it's the Wallflower. <laughs> of coal. Three lumps of coal sat down to rest in old from Shambo town and fell to talking which was best or who should wear the crown. One lump came from wind's old mine. One lump came from noon's. Third one came from Leighton's pit. And none of them played tunes. <laughs> Drink they took to aid their wits and aisle their deep discussion. It's thirsty work down in the pits. Try asking any Russian. <laughs> <laughs> Lock Allen Bar commit to It now became their venue. They could all have sat by the long by the fire. But that wasn't on the menu. And as the tree began to talk, they heard the bar door click, and in there walked the saddest cold that ever uh, met a pig. He Jesus uh, wind let out a cry. They didn't take me, sir. I do believe we all will grieve, for your name is Craw Coleman. Crawford's head hung down in shame, his eyes were on the floor. For cursed he was and cursed he is, and yet cursed thrice or more. Sulfur from the pit of hell hung heavy round his head. Can I buy you all a round of drinks? The lonely Crawford said. Principle and comfort clashed. The three lumps stopped to think. Though disinclined to a uh, life pro quo, ah, they weren't averse to drink. We can't refuse, spoke we out loud, for that would be insulting. And maybe you could help us out what, with what we are consulting. We have a problem picked up new, of which of us is best. And solving that is often tough. Now, which way will you catch? Have you tried burning pro advised to see which one of you is brightest? Not on the cards, old Leighton said. No good in the slightest. sing a song, says Craw, and I'll be ref. No use at all, says Window Eye, for cold is born to death. <laughs> then why not all you be just good friends, says Craw, in desperation? Yes, might be different grades of cold. All cold is one nation. With every pint that Craw Cold bark, the friendship grew and grew. Peace broke out as Swedish stuff, as wind addressed the crew. Now mark this day in Drochambo, the worm feeds good tonight. Coal might be sunshine on the ground, but now it's seen the night. Oh, Bonhomie has buried the coat. They walked. Tonight, with jaw, 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 
not war, war, war. That felt like ultra sex. <laughs> <laughs> Comrades all, each with a smile, hail fellows now when met. And if the lorry hadn't crushed them all, they'd still be talking yet. <laughs> <laughs> Long before um, the, uh, Christy Moore from County Kildare became famous, uh, this, this part of the world had, had its own Christy Moore. Mm -hmm. And I don't know whether Christy may have worked in Wayne's mines, I don't know whether he worked in the mines. Uh, that, that's the only thing I could think of that he made any money out of, because he never made any money from singing. But uh, he was a great man to sing the songs of um, Paddy McGowan. Had he filled the McGowan? Yeah. 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 And I'm not too sure whether this is one of Paddy's or not, but <coughs> it, it, it kind of has a resonance, you know, because remember when the Celtic Tiger came along and everybody was building houses, you know, and the word, you know, you looked at, you looked up, up somewhere and there'd be a house in your back garden, you know, kind of, and all you could hear was the sound of diggers and stuff like that. But all these houses I found in the, that big time when everybody had loads of money, they all had four or five bathrooms in them. And I kind of thought, we must have stank the high head. <laughs> Look at Michael, for example. When we, were, when we were going up, we were looking to get a bath once a week, if not once a fortnight. And it, and I know it must be two, I'm sure. <laughs> but um, I remember uh, as a child, we'd all have to get into the bath, and sometimes you might have been three or four other people in there before you. And, you know, when you get in, there'd be kind of a scum along the top of it. <laughs> she's laughing now because she remembers. <laughs> and if you lay there too long, you know, and stood up suddenly, you'd have a high water mark. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, this song is a kind of about, uh, it's about the first ensuite bathroom that they had in those days. And um, there'll be a couple of things mentioned in this that the younger people won't know. Uh, there was a powder. Uh, and the powder is Mrs. Cullen's powder. Do you remember them? She used to say, headaches, toothaches, earaches, and period pain. <laughs> I just thought period pain something you got every second week. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> but, uh, anyway, that's what it used to say. And then there's uh, a thing called a chamber mentioned. And a chamber, as I say, was one of the first types of ensuite baths when they had in those days. It used to be called a gazunda as well, because it was under the bed. Do you remember? <laughs> but uh, anyway, um, I'll sing this acapulco and see how we get on. An old woman called Mrs. Maloney was in bed with her old husband, John. She said, I feel terribly frightened because I heard a strange noise about dawn. Well, John Fred, don't be frightened, me darling, for it's only a mouse, I've no doubt. And before very long, I assure you, I'll have him caught by the snout. out. Well, he put a trap out for the raider and he placed it under the bed. He said, before this time tomorrow, that bloody mouse will be dead. Then Mary, up early next morning, she started to clean out the room. She put the trap into the chamber, <laughs> intending to move it quite soon. <laughs> and you're way ahead of things. <laughs> <laughs> then poor John, he came home with a toothache. He roared and he bawled a whole lot, and with all of the fuss and excitement, so the bloody old trap was forgotten. She gave him a powder to soothe him. They got into bed with great care. She told him the patience that Job had and all the great pain he could bear. <laughs> then, let's see what happened next. <laughs> uh, the pain he could. Then they went off to sleep nice and easy. But John, he got up in the night. When he sat down to use the old chamber with him, but he got a hell of a <laughs> Well, the trap it closed in on its victim. There wasn't a thing he could do. He roared till he woke up the neighbors with that terrible hull of a balloon. Then poor Mary, still thinking it was too big, sat up in the bed with the jump. She said, can't you go to the dentist and let them take out that old stump? <laughs> <laughs> well, it isn't the stump that annoyed me. I just got a terrible rap. I'd like to see the patience that Job had if he got it in a trap. <laughs> Uh, every year on the second of second Saturday of July.
you like, there's a gathering of not the miners, but there are some of the old miners there, but the miners' banners and the brass bands and uh, all, all kinds of people are invited. Uh, it's a socialist event, basically, and uh, it's been supported over the years by all kinds of philanthropists who would like to see these things continue. One of them, in the age of Bruce Springsteen, has won his $30,000 to the running the thing. It's a huge event, and uh, it's trying to make it as international as possible. There was a Belgian band there last year, and I don't know if you remember the saga of the Chilean miners a couple of years ago, three or four years ago now, where they were all knocked down below for long periods. And we've got one of those, one of those miners came to be on the balcony, and a similar thing happened in Spain a couple of years back. If there's anything in China, and events. Frequent deaths in China, sadly. But uh, one of the things we do is, that as a product of that folk club I mentioned earlier on in Berkeley, a gathering of kind of a scratch band of folk musicians going to support one in, one colliery in particular. And when we get to the, the balcony where the remains of the Labour Party, British Labour Party, stand, Tony Benn was great supporter of the present coda. I won't go into all that. <laughs> Um, but we sing this song, and it's, it's, it's actually it comes from a Welsh mining song, Welsh, Welsh, sorry, a Welsh mining song, Welsh hymn, which went to America and became adopted by the American miners, and then came back, and it is now very popular in, in the county Durham. It's known as the, the Miners' Lifeguard or Life's Railway to Heaven in America. But this one's called the Union Miners Stand Together. It's a lovely country to choose.
stand like men and stand together. Very 
impressed. He said, but how did you get the ear like that? He said, well, he was, said, well, he was a bit wedged in. He said, well, I hit him, I hit him out with a sledgehammer. <laughs> <laughs>
Picked up my shovel and walked to the mine of old 16 tons of number 9 coal. The strong boss hard as a piss my soul, you know, 16 tons. What do you get? Another day on the rack, deeper in debt. Hey, don't you call me cause I can't go. Oh, my soul to the company store. Uh, you should see yourself from this side. You're like goldfish or <laughs> Trouble in my middle name, I was raised at the bottom of my home on my house. I mean, there's a dog, yellow as a lamb, yellow the 16 tons. What do you get? Another day older and deeper in debt. Oh, don't you call me because I can't go. I owe my soul to the company store. <laughs> this is the violin verse, and I think for us common, where are we anyway? Yeah. Be careful what we say. Somebody said, um, Why does a, a literary man take an instant dislike to a Roscommon man? It's because it saves time. <laughs> <laughs> it seems, you know, that the, during one of these wars, or whatever, you know, there's always a firing squad and a commandant. But the commandant has always got a German accent. You notice that? But see, there was a Leitrim man and a Roscommon man, and they were standing at the firing squad just waiting to be shot. The commandant said, he went to the Leitrim man, he said, Is there any wish you would like before you die? The Leitrim man said, You know, he said, I'd love to hear Larry coming. He said, Lovely Leitrim. Once, once before I go, he turned to the Roscommon man and said, Have you any wishes before you die? Could you shoot me first? <laughs> Sunday. 
Yeah. 